should start a lecture by saying it's not very exciting. Um, so we've talked about identities and the next few chapters are going to give you a long laundry list of trigonometric identities. And we're going to start with the sum and difference formulas. And there are six of those, three for sums, three for differences. So the sum and difference form of those are for when you have a trig function evaluated at, as the name kind of suggests, evaluated at a sum or a difference. There are really only three sum and difference form of those, the way um, this phrase is usually used. One for the sine, one for the cosine, one for the tangent. When you can write formulas down for the secant, cosecant, and cotangent, but it's a little different. Um, so we'll start with the sine, and we'll start specifically with the sign of a sum, the sign of alpha plus beta equals, and whatever you were hoping this would be, it probably isn't it. Um, the sign of alpha plus beta is not the sign of alpha plus the sign of beta. It's the sine of alpha times the cosine of beta plus, there is more, the cosine of alpha times the sine of beta. So the cost of getting rid of this addition here is, as you can see, that you're replacing it with a rather convoluted looking expression. Um, and it's hard in trigonometry to really get at why we care about or care for these identities. I mean, they're really calculus tools in general. And in fact, really calculus two tools. But we should we should try to do some kind of application if we're given a rule like this. And the main application that people come up with is that it lets you take the sine and the cosine of angles in your head, or at least without a calculator, whose sines and cosines you would not otherwise be able to take. So for example, the sine of not 35 degrees, um, the sine of 75 degrees. I mean, we can take this in the in the sense that we can um, go to our calculator and type it in. But if you recognize that 75 is the sum 
of two angles whose signs do know or whose signs do hopefully know, then we can take this pen and paper without having to use a calculator. And it's very much plug and play. So here are 30 degrees is our alpha and our 45 degrees is our beta. And we get the sine of 30 degrees times the cosine 45 degrees plus the cosine of 30 degrees times the sine of 45 degrees. And now, um, 30 degrees is pi over 6, so the sine of 30 degrees, the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. 45 degrees is pi over 4. It's the square root of 2 over 2 plus... The cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. The sine of 45 degrees is once again the square root of 2 over 2. 45 degrees is the angle whose sine equals its cosine. Um, so that's the square root of 2 over 4 plus the square root of 6 over 4. Of course, we, we probably don't have much intuition about what this answer means. The square root of 2 plus the square root of 6, like is this... Is this fraction less than one? Is this fraction bigger than one? I'm going to resist the urge to pull up the calculator because once we pull up the calculator, it raises uncomfortable questions about why we don't just plug that into the calculator instead of doing all of this. So, the sine of alpha minus beta, it's the sine of alpha times the cosine of beta minus the cosine of alpha times the sine of beta. So exactly the same thing we have here, except that here we have addition, and that addition is replicated over there. Here we have subtraction, and that subtraction is replicated over there. Um, you'll notice, or the students in the room will have noticed, that I copied that down from a sheet of paper. I have never committed these to memory, and I doubt that that is a very productive use of your time. I. Um, my sort of philosophy is that you should be able to use these formulas. 
but you should be able to recognize that 75 is a sum, and then you should be able to use this formula to take the sine of 75 degrees, but, but as far as actually memorizing it, I mean, that's what Google is for. Um, before Google, there were textbooks with lengthy lists of formulas in the back for easy reference. So, Let's find a sign using this identity. Um, with radians, it's harder to just look at something and recognize that this is a sum or a difference, but I over 12 is kind of one of those classic examples because it's the difference of two signs that you know. It turns out that pi over 12 is pi over three minus pi over four. And after we have made that observation. So pi over three is standing in for alpha. Pi over four is standing in for beta. And this becomes plug and say. So the sine of alpha, the cosine of beta minus the cosine of alpha. <clears throat> times the sine of beta. And then again, this is just sort of, do you, do you remember these or not? The square root of three over two, the square root of two over two. What's the cosine of pi over three? Yep, you sounded uncertain, but you're right. That cosine is one half. The sine is the square root of two over two. The square root of three times the square root of two is the square root of six. Two times two is four. Then one times the square root of two is the square root of two. Two times two is again four. And we get the square root of six minus the square root of two, all divided by four. Again, probably not, probably we don't have much intuition about that number, but let's do cosines. And I'm afraid that that it really is just this. Put an identity on the board, do an example, put an identity on the board, do an example until we run out of identities and examples. So the cosine formed of the 
is similar in some ways, different in others. So instead of having a cosine and a sine up front, our cosines and sines are going to be separate. We'll have the cosines multiplied together and we'll have the sines multiplied together. And then there's one bit of unintuitiveness, which is that the addition and subtraction do not match in this cosine identity. The cosine of a sum turns into subtraction. So let's do um, the cosine of O here's here's an angle we actually don't need question. To be two alphas or one sine alpha, oh, and then sine beta. Correct. Thank you. That's uh, is indeed supposed to be an alpha and a beta. So the cosine of 120, we don't really need this identity to take. because 120 has a 60 as a reference angle. And we hopefully know the cosine of 60 and we could use reference angles to figure this out. But just for a bit of variety, And because, because, I mean, we're pretty limited. I mean, if we know 30 and 60 and 45, there are only so many ways to add and subtract those. So just for a little variety, let's use the fact that 120 is 90 plus 30 to find this using the um, cosine formula. And I sort of think this formula is maybe a little easier to, to use. I mean, the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta, well, it doesn't really matter what we call alpha and what we call beta. We've got the cosine of one of these angles times the cosine of the other angle minus the sine of one of these angles times the sine of the other angle. So what's the cosine of 90 degrees? Just one. Pi over two. I've heard one. I've heard pi over two. Neither of those are quite right. Pi over two is 90 degrees written in radians. One, um, the sine of 90 degrees would be one. So remember our unit circle. Here's 90 degrees. This is the point. Zero comma one, 
the cosine is the x coordinate, so the cosine is zero. Then, I mean, I kind of write down the cosine of 30 degrees, but it's not gonna matter. We're about to multiply it by zero. Then the sine of 90 degrees is one. The sine of 30 degrees is one half zero minus one half is negative one half. So there's your cosine for a sum, and your cosine for a difference is, I mean, this is going back to here, where the only difference is that addition on the left gives you addition on the right, and subtraction on the left gives you subtraction on the right. You know, here, addition on the left gives you subtraction on the right. We could maybe sort of guess what this is going to be. It's going to be the same as on the last frame except that subtraction on the left will give us addition on the right. Just a second, I'm going to need, we're going faster than I thought. I've already admitted not to having these memorized. Just a second to get the trig on the tangent identity up or when I need it. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, I guess, I mean, I guess we should do an example. Again, I, I admit these aren't the most, um, thrilling problems. Let's at least um let's at least change things up a little by maybe throwing in a negative angle. <laughs> the cosine of negative 75 degrees. So this requires a little caution. <clears throat> the cosine of negative 75 degrees, well, we can write that as negative 45 minus 30. We could also have written it as minus 30, as negative 30 minus 45. So in terms of this formula, this negative 45 is going to be the alpha, no problem. But our beta, is going to be positive 30. And that's because the negative sign, I mean, this subtraction here corresponds to that subtraction there. So the negative in front of the 30 isn't part of beta. It's indicating that we have this subtraction. So the cosine of negative 45 degrees times the cosine 
of positive 30. Thus, the sign of negative 45 degrees times the sign of positive 30. And then And my impression is that maybe we, we shouldn't rush through this. The 30, we hopefully just know or can figure out. But here's negative 45 degrees. Here's positive 45 degrees. Let me sketch in a not very circular unit circle. So the x coordinates of these points are the same. And the x-coordinate is the cosine, square root of two over two, the square root of two over two. The y-coordinates are going to be the same, except that one of them will be positive and the other will be negative. Um, up in the first quadrant, the y coordinate is positive. Down in the fourth quadrant, the y coordinate is negative. So, the cosine of negative 45 degrees is the positive square root of two over two. The cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of three over two plus so the sine of negative 45 degrees is negative the square root of two over two. And the cosine of 30 degrees is one half. So the square root of six over four plus a negative is going to turn into minus the square root of two over four. So the square root of six minus the square root of two all divided by four. So, sine, cosine, tangent, mess of a formula, although, again, maybe I shouldn't be passing that kind of judgment, but the tangent of alpha plus beta, the tangent of alpha plus the tangent of beta divided by one minus the tangent of alpha times the tangent of beta. So,
So unlike the sine and the cosine, the formula for the tangent only involves the trig function, the tangent. There is no cotangent here, as you maybe sort of would think there would be looking at these previous functions. Um, I don't have a lot to say. We can certainly do an example. We have the time. Um, so the tangent is the sine divided by the cosine, and maybe it therefore sort of makes sense that it combines some features of the sine and the cosine identity. So remember, with the sine, addition stays addition. With the cosine, addition become a subtraction. With the tangent, we see both these things because there's addition on top and addition down below. And let me just put subtraction on the same frame. This is going to reverse where the additions and the subtractions show up. So agreement in the numerator, disagreement in the denominator. Um, any example we do is going to be a little lengthy compared to the previous examples, just because we probably haven't memorized any tangents. Um, but the tangent is the sine over the cosine. So if we know the sines and we know the cosines, we can figure the tangents out. Let's do, let's return to 75 degrees. So this is 45 degrees plus 30 degrees. So addition gives a, well, the tangent in general, there's agreement up top, disagreement down below, by which I mean, so we have addition here, That's going to give addition up here, but subtraction down here. And I to be honest, I just put parentheses wherever I think they're going to be useful for you to, to read this. So um, I sometimes I put the angle in parentheses, sometimes I don't. There's no real rhyme or reason. Um, let's try to figure this out. You don't have to. But 45 degrees is maybe, maybe the only angle where you might just end up committing the tangent to memory. The tangent of 45 degrees is one. 
going back to this picture, getting rid of the extraneous stuff. The tangent is the sine divided by the cosine. The sine divided by the cosine is this. And if you have a fraction where the numerator and denominator are the same, that fraction is one. 30 degrees, let's just work this out. Certainly I don't have it memorized. It's the sine over the cosine. So the sine of 30 degrees is one half. The cosine is the square root of three over two. One over the square root of three or if you're the kind of person who gets set upset about having a square root in the denominator, that's the square root of three divided by three. So, what does that leave us with? One plus the square root of three divided by three. One minus the square root of three divided by three. And because we have some time before class ends, we might as well try to write that in a slightly more acceptable way. Uh, by which I mean you wouldn't normally have a fraction of fractions that's considered bad form. The way to get out of this is to rewrite to the top as a fraction. And I was not doing that correctly. We need a common denominator to rewrite the top as a single fraction. We need a common denominator to rewrite the bottom as a single fraction. Three plus the square root of three over three divided by three minus the square root of three over three. And then you multiply top and bottom by the reciprocal of the bottom. Three plus the square root of three. Three minus the square root of three. And there are the sum and difference formulas. It's kind of a lot, but I'm hoping that by not making you memorize all six of these, I'm sort of ameliorating that. Um, I said that the other trade functions 
<laughs> don't really have some and difference formulas. I mean, let's just comment on that briefly. Let's say we have the secant of alpha plus beta. Well, what we certainly can do is write the secant as one over the cosine of alpha plus beta. And then we can say the cosine of alpha plus beta is what it is. We've got the cosines multiplied. We've got the sines multiplied. And for the um, cosine, our positivity and negativity signs don't match. Addition turns into subtraction. Um, but there's nothing you can really do with this. I mean, when you have addition and subtraction in the denominator of a fraction, you can't break the fraction up. And then this is sort of, I mean, we have gotten rid of the addition in the parentheses, but what we normally do is, I mean, we rewrote the tangent in terms of the tangent. We rewrote the sine in terms of the sine and the cosine. We rewrote the cosine in terms of the sine and the cosine. I mean, sort of by symmetry, if there were an addition form to the, for the secant, you'd think it would be rewriting the secant in terms of the secant and the cosecant. And we don't have anything like that. 